This photo was taken on the surface of Titan in January of 2005 by the Hygens lander. And what is shown in the photo is the most common type of terrain on Titan, the plains. Titan's plains, when viewed through radar, appear as dark surfaces that lack features. They are largely undifferentiated. This is the first global geologic map of Titan, made by NASA in 2019. And the map, in the color teal, showcases Titan's plains. As clearly visible, they take up a huge amount of space, about 70% of Titan's surface area, which means they take up about 60 million kilometers square. So they have a surface area about the size of North America and Asia together. In comparison to the plains, the dark sand dunes of Titan, which are around the equator, take up about 12 million kilometers square, the surface area of the United States. And the rugged, hummocky terrain takes up about 9 million kilometers square. Meanwhile, Titan's polar lakes are tiny in comparison to these large terrain units, because the lakes take up only about 900,000 kilometers square, which is 1% the surface area of Titan. This is a map of Titan, not in radar, but in near infrared. It clearly shows that the plains are, although not bright, still much brighter than the dark equatorial area that is filled with sand dunes. Likely the plains consist of organic matter mixed in with ice, while the dunes are mostly organic, meaning most of the molecules that make up the dunes have a carbon atom in their molecular structure. Although there is clearly a difference between the northern undifferentiated plains and the southern ones, northern plains are brighter and likely have more ice compared to the southern hemisphere plains, which are much darker and likely have more organic matter. The hummocky terrain, which is particularly visible at the equator due to its exceptional brightness, the Xanadu region, likely consists almost entirely of icy materials. Probably it has quite a bit of water ice. At Titan's frigid temperatures of minus 180 degrees Celsius, water ice acts more like rock does on Earth, as the lower the temperatures, the greater is the hardness of the water ice, which also allows for the hummocky terrain of Xanadu to exist, along with the tallest mountain of Titan to exist, which is right in the Xanadu region. Bidri Montes is 3.3 kilometers above Titan's zero meter reference point. As already shown, this is how these undifferentiated planes appear in near infrared. They don't appear to be very dark, but at longer wavelengths, in radar, they very much do. This is how they typically look like in radar. This image encompasses an area of about 36,000 kilometers square and yet it is completely featureless. This radar image, along with the infrared map of Titan, was captured by NASA's Cassini spacecraft that arrived on Saturn in 2004. This spacecraft also deployed the Hygens lander that landed on Titan in 2005. Pretty much most of the real images and with that knowledge of Titan is currently due to this spacecraft. One thing that suggests that the material that makes up the undifferentiated planes sits on top of a layer made out of something different is this crater on Titan. What is visible is a hummocky terrain which is the rim of the crater. The rim is also elevated above the planes, and yet there is clearly an undifferentiated plane in the middle of the crater. Despite there being no easy way in due to the elevated rims, the material that makes up the planes somehow got into the crater. Here is another crater on Titan which is partially filled in by undifferentiated planes. Something caused for the material of the undifferentiated planes to be deposited directly into the center of the craters after their formation. Before the plane materials got into the craters, they were likely entirely hummocky and bright. Because the material of Titan's planes sits on top of another layer, as shown by the two previous craters, it is also most likely a newer layer, while the icy layer that is typically beneath the surface is an older layer. 
This also then suggests that the bright hummocky terrain of Titan, which is a part of the icy layer, is older than the plains. Hummocky terrain, due to likely being older than the plains, at some point in Titan's history, quite possibly covered a much greater surface area compared to how much surface area it covers now. Then, through some mechanism, the undifferentiated plains started spreading and they blanketed a much greater surface area. Quite possibly, they covered the icy hummocky regions. However, it is also possible that the enormous hummocky regions appeared after the plains, since they also could have been propped up from beneath the surface by some unknown mechanism after the plains formed. In this radar image of Titan, three different terrain types can be seen. The undifferentiated plains, which are mostly grey, the bright mountainous hummocky terrain, and there are also dark sand dunes. Although individual dunes are hard to see in this image, they are still obviously present here. Considering that the dunes of Titan pretty clearly sit on top of the undifferentiated plains, that implies that the plains formed before the dunes. Also, both of the terrain types are quite similar in terms of elevation. The variation within these two major terrain types is only about 200 meters, while the bright hummocky terrain is typically topographically higher than the plains and the sand dunes. So out of these three big terrain types, the sand dunes are likely the youngest. The fourth major type of terrain on Titan is the labyrinth type. It is nearly entirely absent around the equator. Rather, it is mostly located at high latitudes. It almost always appears as isolated from the hummocky terrain, and it is almost always surrounded by the undifferentiated plains. Just like the hummocky terrain, this type is also elevated above the plains, and both terrain types are quite rugged. The major difference between the hummocky and labyrinth terrain type is coloration. The labyrinth terrain is significantly darker, suggesting it is not nearly as icy as the hummocky terrain type. So it contains structures likely made out of organic materials in large part. And despite both terrain types being rugged, the labyrinth terrain also has a different shape. It is densely packed with valleys. In terms of age, it is hard to say whether the labyrinth type of terrain appeared first or the hummocky terrain, or if the labyrinth type is even older than the plains. Currently, out of all major terrain types, this one is the least prevalent, taking up a similar surface area to Titan's lakes. However, probably a bit less, likely at least around 500,000 km square. Although, if this type of terrain is older than the plains, for which there is a good chance that it is older, then this type of terrain, just like the hummocky terrain, possibly occupied a much greater surface area in the past. How the plains formed in the first place is not entirely certain. One idea that is easy to exclude is cryovolcanic origin. Cryovolcanoes, instead of spewing lava, spew water on icy worlds. Although that could lead to the formation of plains, Titan doesn't have that many cryovolcanoes or evidence of them being present on a large scale in the past. On top of that, the material of the plains isn't exactly entirely water, rather a good chunk of it is organic. Another idea is that the plains formed through the ultraviolet light hitting the methane, nitrogen and other things in Titan's upper atmosphere, which then caused for the compounds called tholins to form and drop down to the surface. Tholins are a wide variety of organic compounds that are typically somewhat dark. Although it makes sense that this is happening on Titan, one would expect that such a process would also cause for tholins to accumulate throughout the entire surface. But there isn't evidence of a thick layer of tholins on the hummocky terrain of Titan. Otherwise, it wouldn't appear to be bright in radar and near infrared. Tholins could still be there on the hummocky terrain, it's just that there clearly isn't a large amount, and that tells us that the planes probably didn't form entirely due to this process, although this process quite possibly does contribute to the formation of the planes in some small aspect. One possible way that the material of undifferentiated planes 
got into the two craters previously shown is through the winds carrying the undifferentiated plane's material over to the craters. Titan has an atmospheric pressure at the surface of 1.5 bars, which is 1.5 times greater than Earth's surface pressure. On top of that, it has plenty of evidence of the presence of relatively strong winds, such as large sand dunes which formed due to strong winds. Wind could also be the major reason as to how the material of undifferentiated planes started spreading. The eroded chunks of organic matter were possibly carried by wind all over Titan's surface, which led to the formation of planes. Now the reason as to why there aren't any sand dunes made up of small grains everywhere, like there are at the equator, is quite possibly due to the surface being far more wet at higher latitudes from liquid methane and ethane, which makes the surface there immobile. Or the organic sand grains are simply somehow more cemented at higher latitudes for various reasons. There could also be less wind at higher latitudes, so the sand grains aren't getting transported frequently. The sand grains of Titan maybe originate from the labyrinth terrain eroding over time. That explains why the plains and the labyrinth terrain are so similar in composition. However, that is still not certain, and it is not entirely known how the sand grains of Titan formed. Titan is one of the most geologically active worlds in the solar system. The geological activity is also exactly the reason behind why it has different terrain types that formed at different points in Titan's history. Although Titan formed 4.5 billion years ago, like the vast majority of significant bodies in the solar system, despite that, its surface is 1 billion years old or less. The very low amount of craters on Titan indicates that, and such a high level of geological activity also indicates that it went through many different periods during which it had a different look.